up, YouTube? Welcome back. And dreams do come true. It was always a dream to own OGs, yes, but the ultimate grail. The ultimate grail of all grails would be a game used PE from Michael Jordan. So thank you a million times to Indy Jumpman, my good friend from Indianapolis. And uh, we worked out a deal for these beauties, dual signed. Game worn from Michael Jordan, 1990. Air Jordan Fire Red 5 with 3M tongues. Just an incredible shoe. Yes, they are crumbly. I'm not going to swap them. I uh, kind of looked at them as the uh, Roman Coliseum. Leave them as is. I uh, put them on some displays here so I can showcase both shoes um, in a UV protected case. Um, so that's how I store them for people asking. Um, but just an incredible pair. I um, I traded some OG 1985 Jordan 1s for these. It wasn't easy, but it's the right thing to do for me. And um, like Indy Jumpman said, like, they belong in Chicago, and uh, I couldn't agree more. So again, thank you very much. Um, so yes, as I said, these were worn in 1990 by Michael Jordan. And speculation from Mears. They uh, did some research, and they believe that there's a six-game road trip that they wore them on. So the six games, the Bulls did go one and five, but I went and did a little research and calculated some totals where Jordan scored 201 points, three blocks, eight steals, and 30 assists. So that's some, some major numbers, pretty awesome, within six games. And I did some research back to when did he start wearing their Jordan 5? You know, and uh, I could find some footage that uh, started back in January of uh, January 29th of 90. And that was the first game I could find that he had the Fire Reds on foot. And then this was February 1st on the road trip. So possibly he wore those at home and then brought these on the road. And Indy Jumpman, he actually made another good comment saying uh, a great valid point. Like when the Bulls were in uh, Orlando. And his shoes were stolen, and he wore the pennies. You guys all remember that. And his jersey was stolen when he wore the number 12. And that actually kind of ties together with this, because uh, we were talking about that Orlando game. That was February 14th, Valentine's Day. And we do believe that these possibly could be the shoes that MJ was wearing when he, that jersey was stolen, the last game uh, on that road trip. You can see the collars, they're not cotton. It's kind of like a nylon. It's really smooth, it's more narrow. And in some in some photos we found online, you can see that it's definitely it definitely resembles this. And you can see on the other one as well that the uh, the collars are nylon. Compared to uh you know, more cotton ones. And you can see on the left side here, I have the OG General Release. It's a little more padded, it's a little thicker, and it looks more cotton, a little more flush um, on the uh, the PE. But there are some PEs through uh, other auction websites. I've done some research where the tags look very similar to these. And that's why another reason I think that this PE could be one of the earliest ones. Now some Christie's and uh, Heritage Heritage Auctions so I'll put in some information about that. Production dates and the tongue tags look completely different from this pair to that pair and those other PEs. And another thing, you get the general release, you get the 23 on the side. Just beautiful. It's not outlined in black like the uh, Fire Reds with the black tongue. This is a total PE trait. As you notice, the uh, the side, you know, the netting here is just crystal clear still after these were worn, you know, and beat up on the court. And even 
this pair here, you can see it's kind of yellowed. The quality is not even close to being the same. And on my OG pair to the far left, you can see it's yellowed pretty significantly. So kind of lucky that these, these PEs have uh, held up as well as they have. So pretty, pretty neat detail. And you can see the netting is actually cut larger than like on the uh, general release to the far left. So as far as for the autographs, um, they authenticated the shoes as legit and that they were, you know, game worn. But they said that the secretary signed, but this doesn't make sense to me. So uh, after doing a little research and talking with my guy, Andy Jumpman, um, I do believe that the autographs are legit. Saying that they were signed by the secretary at the Bulls after a road trip, it's kind of weird. And the real thing that sold it for me was the guy that bought these originally, and then Indy Jumpman bought them from, off of him, he had an autograph that he had authenticated through mirrors that uh, it was a piece from MJ. He went to college with him at UNC. And he went to just, you know, for his own peace of mind, just to have the proof that it was, it was signed. And um, the piece came back, and they rejected it, saying that it wasn't signed by Jordan, that it was fake, basically. But, you know, how is it fake when when the uh, the autograph was signed in person by him. So when it comes to autographs, it's like it's a person's, you know, you have these these professionals, but it's really in an opinion. And if you were there and you saw it autographed, you know for 100% that it's real because you were in person. So it's kind of a, kind of a bizarre thing. And I, I take uh, authentication of autographs with a grain of salt. So this isn't, you know, this is not a upper deck card I'm buying on eBay. So there's no doubt in my mind that these signatures are legit and um, that doesn't really bother me. So I thought that was pretty cool that uh, that little backstory tied to this pair from the guy that had them originally. So and next we're going to we're going to show you guys, you know, a little side by side um, with the P.E.s and the general release and as well as the first retro from 2000. So here's a little front end shot. You guys can see I have the uh, general release. This is a size 10. Uh, very close to dead stock, um, Air Jordan OG Fire Red on the uh, big old slab from Chicago Stadium, the white paint. Love it. So uh, I keep, you know, moving them on here so that way I don't have to worry about them cracking and crumbling and I keep these on display for the uh, the PEs. But you can see um, Jordan's toe cap comes up a little higher. Our... Um, our general release PEs, or no, I mean our general release uh, Air Jordan 5 OG, sometimes you see it come up a little higher. There's just, you know, some variance. Um, on my black metallic, I believe it's a little closer, you know, to this it comes up. But you can see on the left here, that it's not quite, and it's got a little widow's peak. So those pairs are a little different. I'm not going to pull on Jordan's tongue so much, but this is unlaced. So as you guys can see, the tongue height is... It comes way up, just the way it's supposed to. Just like his, you've seen in photos. I kind of posted about that yesterday for MJ Mondays um, with the black metallics. And you can see here, I really love this retro. Um, I think it is the best retro, the 2000, but pulling on the tongue, look how low it is still. Like, it doesn't even come up. Like, the whole jump man's practically underneath the lining. The red's a little, little lighter red. And you can see this is pretty vibrant. And the lining on the OG here is pretty pretty deep red. So these two are a little closer. The netting, like I said earlier, though, is just on the OG has got that sheen to it. This is more yellowed, but it looks really good. And this is still very, very clear translucent. Lots of scuffs. You could see, I mean, these, these have been, I really do believe they were worn in that many games. I know you usually hear, you know, about Jordan wearing a new pair every game. But on the road, I believe, you know. It makes sense that if his shoe was stolen, um, that maybe he had the same the same pair for a few games and didn't have a backup. That's why Penny gave him uh, his Air Penny, so the one, numero uno. Yeah, lace locks are pretty much the same. You can see it's got the Nike right here. And then here, pretty much the same. Durabuck feels it's a little, a little smoother here. 
It's a little more textured than PE. And this one is really nice. I, I really like the, the retro. It feels closer to the PE, honestly. It's got a little texture to it. I didn't break out the, the pair from last year, 2020. They're just, they don't really, you know, it's not, they're a nice retro, but they're not on the same level as a PE or these two uh, previous, the OG or the first retro. So, but yeah, very, uh, very thick, you know, thick padding here. And you can see Jordan wore like thicker socks with these and gave him a little more, I'm sure a lot of tape wrapped up there. And yeah, the OG, definitely higher tongue. To take a little heel view now, um, all that Nike Air booty. And we have the OG PE game worn pair here on the far right. This is the 2000 Retro. And then we have the OG size 10 here. And you can see the OG definitely it's size 13 and it's, it's wider, you know. But you do notice like the Retros these days, the ankle bubbles, they just beef them up. It's very slim here. Even on the general release, it's a little, a little slimmer, but they're puffed up a little bit. And it's interesting. I wonder if Jordan's later um, PE fives, if they might have been flared out just a little bit. And uh, this is just huge definition here. Heights are about the same as you can see. A little more narrow here. The reds are deeper on the OG. You can definitely see if you get in tight, you can see the nylon finish compared to like more of a cotton. The same thing here, where it's just a deeper red. Air Jordan upside down on the tongue, on the PE. And they actually put it right side up on the first retro. And on the OG, it's upside down. So just a few decent, you know, little notes to make. Just the scuff marks on the inside too. I'm gonna move this so you guys can see the amount of wear on these. You see other PEs and they do get scuffs and stuff, but this it's just gets torn up pretty heavily. There's some uh, inner foot shots for you guys to see and the polyurethane has crumbled out pretty well. Um, but you can see a little better detail of all the scuffs, the scrapes. Interesting to you know find some more photo match stuff to uh, find out these little battle wounds. And on this side here, you can see more. Inner foot here, a lot of scuffs. And on the left shoe here, you can see this blue mark. So my speculation is it could be from the floor, because we're thinking, you know, this could have been worn um, at the Orlando game. So it could have been maybe from the floor itself or maybe one of the opponents, like blue paint on the midsole or something. So it's definitely, definitely a shade of blue, and you can kind of see hints of that around as well. Just a beautiful autograph. Love it. And then you can see on the inside here, you kind of see the Nike stamp. It's not completely intact. And uh, definitely some wear, some sock fuzz from the goat. Just a, just a beautiful pair. Great piece of history. So here's uh, the side panel, outer foot. I thought it would be neat to see for the PE and the OG. And you can see the, you know, the 23, obviously the big difference. And the size of the netting. It's cut just a little larger and it comes, you got a little less Durabuck down here. And when you look at the, uh, the OG, general release here it's a little just a little smaller it's oxidized more over time and um just a little there's more more space here but overall that one's just got more of a more of a flare on the pe it looks really good drop in the uh 2000 retro too i do i do love this retro i think it's great and it brings me back to um right before my parents separated this was like one of the last things my mom bought and got her same last name, you know, that's changed. But, yeah, looking at the receipt, it's kind of cool. 
in uh, retrospect and brings you to that time when we got these at uh, Champs. Here's the old outsole. They're aging quite nicely. No, I did not uh, dye them yellow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really like this retro. It's beautiful. But today was more about the, uh, the PEs, obviously. Just a lot of history. It's still unreal to think that these are my possession and forever grateful. Indie Jumpman, thanks again for uh, allowing me to own a piece of history like this. And uh, you guys uh, drop a comment, please like this video, subscribe. I'm on uh, Instagram at OG or Bust, and have a good one.